I forgot to record the steps of this problem, but it's there. Part A is here. So we're going to move on to part B. B. He's telling us x has to be 1, and then we have to find all the equations of the tangent lines for every one of those places. So what I need to do is if x equals to 1, I need to plug 1 in for every x. So the original problem, could you read it back to me, Aaron, the whole original problem? Cubed. Plus 6x squared. Plus 6x squared. Times y? Minus 12x squared. Minus 12x squared. Plus 6y. Sir, what's on the I don't know. I told him to read me oh, the... I'm doing the... Sorry. I, was, I had a preset from another one. Oh. Oh, okay. The original problem. <laughs> All right. X, y cubed. X, X, Y what? Okay. Minus x cubed y. X cubed y. Oh, uh, yeah, it was a lot of writing I was doing for that. <laughs> okay. So B says, I want to find all the ordered pairs where x is, was it a 1 or a negative 1? A 1. A 1. So the work would look like this. And you probably get, you probably get one of the points by finding the uh, x values, finding the ordered pairs, I should say. You probably get... Uh, a point. So if there's only one, that's fine, but there could be more. So it's going to be a 1 times y squared minus 1 cubed times y has to be 6. So you didn't have to really show those ones because you could have just said uh, y squared minus, yes, minus y has to be 6. And then this looks to me like if I move the 6 over, I get y squared minus y minus 6 is equal to 0. I can solve this bad boy for y. And since it's a quadratic, there, there might be more than one y, which means there's two ordered pairs or three order, well, at least two. It could be two. That does factor y minus 3y plus 2, right? So y is a 3, y is a negative 2. So the two ordered pairs that you have to write out would be 1, 3, and 1, negative 2. And you probably get one point for doing that. That wasn't even calculus. That's just algebra. But now, knowing the idea of a tangent line, we got to finish this up. For my tangent lines, you need two things. Well, you need three. You need your x1, but we already know that is going to be a 1 because that's the x value that I'm using for both points. And then you have a y1. Well, that's going to be different for each of these points. The y1 for this one is a 3, and then this one is going to be a negative 2. What's the third thing I need for each tangent line? Slope. Well, the slope would be dy dx evaluated at that ordered pair, 1, 3. This slope would be the dy dx evaluated at the point 1, 2. So that's not, I, I don't see anything on my screen right now that I need. Wait, I need the slope equation. I need dy dx. So go back up and look at the top. Even if you got it wrong, he gave you the answer to the slope. You just have to write this correctly and use it. So, Valentina, could you read me what dy dx is so I can put it over here to make my life a little easier? dy dx is... So now all I have to do is put the 1 and the 3 in the x and the y, and I'm going to find out what this slope is going to be. So here goes. Hopefully, catch me if I fall, please. That's a 3 times a 1 squared. That's going to be times a 1. I'm not going to put it. Times a y, which is a 3, minus a y 
squared, right? 9 all over. 2 times a 1 is a 2 times the 3 minus uh, 1 times 1 minus a 1. So I think this slope is 9 minus, wait a minute, looks to me like the whole thing is going to give me 0, isn't it? Yeah. 0. Did anybody agree with that? Okay, good. If, if, if I get that many people agreeing, then I feel a little better. The second slope, the second slope is going to be using the same equation. I'm looking up there. 2 times 1 is still 2, but this time the y is a negative 2. Minus a negative 2 squared is a 4 over 2 times 1 is a 2 times the y, which is a negative 2, minus... Uh, a 1 again is a negative 4 minus 4 over the, looks to me like a negative 5, which, does that turn into 8 fifths? Did that for anybody else? I don't remember that answer. Ty, do, did you get that same slope? That sounds more familiar. Find my mistake. Who wants points? Oh, wait, it's probably a negative, probably the negative problem, right? Two, uh, oh, three. I see it. I see it. It's a three right here. I caught that. If there's another mistake, you get it. Three times the negative two minus the one over two times the negative two. I think I'm okay now. Uh, that gives me a negative 6. Yep, negative 6, negative 10. It is negative 10 over 5, which is what? No, no, it's negative over negative. Is it a 2? Yeah. All right. So now I'm ready for this line. Remember the equation. Y minus Y1 is the slope times X minus X1. Y minus Y1 equals the slope times X minus X1. So I plug in uh, Y minus... minus Minus what? My one, Y1 one was a 3, wasn't it? Equals 0 times X minus 1. Well, that's a silly thing. 0 times anything is what? That's a 0. So that just means Y is equal to 3. There's your line. It's a horizontal line. Let's do this one. Y minus, this time it was a negative 2. So Y minus minus 2, I think, is a plus 2. My slope is a 2, x minus 1. Anybody agree with that equation? So you probably got one point for finding the points. You probably got one point for finding the slopes. Was there anything else? Wait a minute. That was all of B. You had to get three points. How could you get three? Let's see. Oh, I probably, probably you get one point for that, one point for getting your slopes, one point for making your equations. It's probably how you got your points on this problem. Those of you that are having trouble communicating on your AP exam, look how every section has a purpose. And there's full communication. I've written the full formula out. M is equals, equals, M2, because it was different, so I said M2 equals, equals, and so you need to be identifying what everything is. You can't just put 5 times 2 minus 1 over 7 minus uh, 4 and, and just say uh, 10 minus 1 is 9 over 3. And I don't have no idea what that answer is. I don't even know what this equation even was. And no, the person grading your paper is not going to hunt all over that problem and try to figure out what, what is a 3. If it's a derivative, then say it. It's the slope. If it's f prime at 1, then say f prime at 1. If it is, uh, there's a lot of things it could be. All right, that was B. C, for the other three points, let's see how hard it got. Find the x-coordinate of each point on the curve. Oh, where the tangent line is vertical. 
All right. What does it mean to be vertical? I had my derivative slope, if I recall, dy dx was equal to, let me put it down again, was 3x squared y minus x squared. 3x squared y minus y squared. Silly me. Over, what do you think I have you guys read it to me? Because I'm uh, 2xy minus x cubed. 2xy minus x cubed. Okay. So my threes look bad. If that's all that I know plus my original equation, what is he telling me if I have my uh, vertical tangents? What does that imply? That True. So what would make this derivative not exist? If the denominator is zero. Guys, write that note to yourself. If the denominator is zero of a derivative, it does not exist. Vertical tangent. That's exactly what you got to do. So let's take the 2xy minus x cubed. That's this part here. Set that equal to zero. What else did I know? He wanted to say, find the x-coordinate for each point of the curve where that is true. Okay. Uh, I can't solve this for x. I could solve this for y. There's also something else you could do. You could find a, a representation by factoring this, but Jillian came up with a better idea. Jillian, Jillian just solved for y. It was a better idea. Mine was going to keep working. So y in this case would be, if I move the x cubed over and divide it by 2x, would be an equation for y. That actually simplifies to x squared over 2, I think. Now you're thinking, well, what good is that? Well, if I go back to my equation that, that Aaron read me to begin with, uh, xy squared minus x cubed y, xy squared minus x cubed y equals to 6. Is that, is that right? Look at your original equation. Is that true? Okay, so what if this x squared over, x cubed, no, x squared over 2 gets plugged into right here and right here? Let's see what happens. Then that gives me x squared over 2 times the x, sorry, that's over here, minus x cubed times x squared over 2 is 6. You can see why this last part is probably the hardest of all of them. Most people should just move on, move on to the next problem. But that's x cubed over 3, to, over 2, I mean. This gives me minus, what was I expecting a bigger answer? Did I not solve it? Did I not do the 3... 2xy. Yeah, okay. 2xy. I was expecting, uh, this is x to the 5 over 2. I wasn't expecting that. Something's still wrong. But turn it, my recording back on. x squared over 2 is my y value here, it's being squared. I forgot to square it. And then, and then the what? Oh, the six has to, oh, I didn't even use this. That's true. That didn't affect me because I didn't even get down there. So that becomes, uh, what's, an, what, what's an x times an x to the fourth? Because that's what happens when you have a power to a power. Oh, that's what I was expecting. See, x to the five over, not a two, but a, I thought you were catching the denominator. Four. Four. Minus, this side's okay. Now, finish this up. Now you can see why I would suggest run, you know. The common denominator, two over two. That would give me an x to the five minus a two x to the five all over, all over four. 
equals to 6. That gives me 1x to the 5 minus 2x to the 5 is a negative x to the 5 equals to 24. x to the 5 equals to negative 24. How do I solve for x? How do you get rid of the fifth power? Square root Not square root. Fifth root. And whenever you fifth root a negative number, it stays negative. X is the fifth root. You can pull the negative out if you want. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You can say of 24. Or you can say X is the fifth root of a negative 24. It's the same thing. And what were they asking for? Make sure that we're... Find the x-coordinates. Okay, we found it. There's only one. Wow, look at all that. Other than that junk up there, there you go. That's a lot of work. A lot of work. Now you know why we didn't finish them all yesterday. Even with... It was more recent. I think that was 2020. Oh, 2000? Oh, lo longer. Okay, to, uh, help from some of my smart kids. I still am slow. All right, second problem came from 2008. That one we just... Why does it seem like 2000 wasn't that long ago for me? I feel like... I remember we were worried about computers all blowing up. There was a name for that. Yes. Yes. Form B, because there used to be two different forms. One was for, like, the the international students, and one was for the United States. The reason they had two forms was because of the time differences, that some places in the world was testing AP before the other places. So to keep people from cheating and passing on information, they had two forms. All right, so part A is exactly the same thing. Show that this, deriv this function gives you this derivative. So I'm going to do this one quicker, as if, what would I be doing if I was rushed for time? I, I would still write out my equation, x squared plus 2x plus y to the fourth plus 4y equals to 5. This one looks easier because no product rule is going to be used. Kind of different. You never know. You never know what they want. So here I go, real fast. 2x plus 2, plus 4y cubed dy dx. Every time there's a y in the function you're taking a derivative, of, you have to end it with dy dx. Plus, does that count now too, the 4y? Yes, no? Is it just a 4? I have to use dy dx equals to 0. So these two things have to go to the other side. These two things are staying here. And, and I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, which is legal, because my step will be equal. You don't have to show every tiny detail. I know for a fact that for these two things right here, I'm going to factor out the dy dx, leaving the 4y, what did I say, 4y cubed, plus the 4, and that's going to be equal to these two things went to the side, which is a negative 2x, negative 2. Yes, I'm absolutely correct in what I just did. Final answer, dy dx, would be a negative 2x minus 2 over 4y cubed plus 4. And I get so excited, and I look up at the answer, uh, whoa, doesn't look the same, does it? because they factored out the negative and they factored out a two in the denominator. See that? You see that two? See that negative? So I look down here and say, oh yeah, factor out the negative. Oh, negative two, wait a minute. I could factor out a negative two and I don't know if I noticed it up there. Factor out a negative two leaving x plus a 1, ah, over a uh, factor out the 4, leaving uh, y cubed plus 1. The 2 and the 4 cancel, 
equals the negative of an x plus 1, and the 4 became a 2, y cubed plus 1. Double check again. Yes, perfect. There's three points. That wasn't so bad. I think it was easier because there's four parts to this. So they tried to save some time, part B. Find the equation of the tangent line for the curve only at one place. Well, that's nice of them. We're only finding one tangent line. And they already gave me my x1 is a negative 2, and my y1 is a 1. All I need is my slope. Huh. If x1 is a 2, and y1 is a 1, is that what I said? What's my slope? It's dy dx evaluated at the 2, 1. Negative 2, 1. Sorry. Negative 2, 1. So you do the same thing. You have your slope, my dy dx, that I already found over here as a negative y plus 1 over a 2 times y squared. It was an x plus 1, wasn't it? y squared plus 1. And now I'm going to plug in this ordered pair into my slope. So dy, I'll just call it slope. My slope will be, they understand, I could also say slope is negative of a 1 plus 1, that's a 2, I think, 2, 1, anybody going to stop me? Uh, since I, I'm just doing this and no one's even with me, is that top number right? Because it says an x plus 1. Did I do an x plus 1? I didn't. X plus 1 would have been a negative 2 plus 1. And the bottom is 2 times a y squared plus 1. Well, y squared is 1, 1 plus 1. I hope the answer is a negative of a negative 1 over 4. Would that become a 1 fourth? There's my slope. So y minus 1 is 1 fourth times x minus minus plus 2. There is my line. Assuming I'm right, okay? And if you're not right, you can still get a lot of points. They do give you a lot of credit even if you write something down wrong. C, find the coordinate of the, they're telling you, there's two points on the curve where the line tangent to the curve is vertical. So there's two places that's vertical. Take your derivative. This is part C. Remember my derivative, dy dx, was equal to negative of an x plus 1 over a 2 times y squared plus 1. And like we did the last problem, we know that 2 times y squared plus 1 has to be equal to 0. What if they would have said horizontal? I think that's the next part. Yeah, we'll, we'll go there after. And then when I solve this for whatever I can solve it for is y, I divide both sides by 2. I don't have to show it. y squared plus 1 is still 0 y squared is negative 1. Wait a minute. It's supposed, to be supposed to be what? Oh, it was a cubed. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Good job, Cesar. That's what I'm talking about. People like Cesar to stand up. He, the reason I got scared because I can't take the square root of a negative 1. And I know there's an answer. So if I cube root both sides, that's not an issue. Y has to be a negative 1. But he wants the full ordered pair, doesn't he? Is that what he said? Yeah, I got to find the coordinate. That means X and Y. Where am I going to get the X from? 
plug it into the original equation. Aaron, read me the original equation. Let's see if we get this at this time right. Are you doing the derivative? Okay. <laughs> I want the original Sorry. equation. <laughs> x squared plus 2x plus 4 uh, to the quartic. 4 to the quartic? Uh-huh. Just 4. Plus 4 to the quartic power. I mean, plus y to the quartic quartic power. Okay, I got lost here. It says 4y. A y to the fourth. That We don't call that... Well, okay, I see what you said. It was y to the fourth, we don't usually say quartic power. <laughs> y to the fourth plus 4y, 4y is equal to? Equal to five. 5. Okay. Never had anybody ever say that before. It's interesting. It's not wrong, I don't think. So I want to know, I already figured out that y has to be a negative 1. y has to be a negative 1. So... If I plug that in, I'll have nothing but x's. x squared plus 2x. A negative 1 to the fourth power, guys, is still going to be just a plain 1 because a negative times negative times a negative times a negative cancels out the negative. And plus 4 times a negative 1, well, when I say plus, it's going to be a negative 4 equals to 5. I remember yesterday we got tangled up with all those numbers. So I'm going to bring the 5 over. x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 4 minus 5. Now maybe it's easier to do this part right here. What is 1 minus 4 minus 5? A negative 8? Negative 8. Set that equal to 0. If it doesn't factor, guys, you have to use quadratic formula. Or if it's a calculator problem, you're allowed to find it with your calculator. Find the x-intercept with your calculator. But he's nice enough. He's x plus 4 times x minus 2. x can be a negative 4. x can be a 2. And he did tell us there's two points. And sure enough, there they are. When you say you mean like AP calculus The who? Well, what did I say? AP calculus God. I think the AP calculus God is a she. They used to say she. Oh, but I wasn't referring to the deity of calculus. Oh, so who are you referring to? Arbitrarily, a person. I even do that on the pre-calculus, and I always got to, every time I turn around, because I know for a fact it was a woman that wrote our pre-calculus stuff that we're using. So I say, she says, the author says, and sometimes I catch myself arbitrarily going, he, I mean she, it's a she. <laughs> I have her picture in the package. Uh, well, and you know what? The truth is, the person or people who wrote this problem, it's not just one person. It's a group. It's a committee. So what we should say is, they said, right? They said... We three, they said two points. So I have, uh, what, what are the two order pairs going to be? I, lo I, love, I, love, I love your thinking, though, Valentina. Inquiring minds do want to know. But I love that AP calculus God. I'm going to try to create that website. I'm retiring. Maybe I need somewhere to channel my energies. Yeah, I'm going to finish up this year. You didn't know? No. I was going to be gone in December. What? It was a secret. You're gonna ditch us. I was. Oh. Wow. I changed my mind for you. Did the COVID make you change your mind? To stay? Yeah. No. No, COVID would make me change my mind to leave uh, yesterday. I'm tired of all this. No, no, I, I'm staying for my calculus kids. Because, well, A-Day a already knew, they already heard that I was not going to come back. And they're the ones that acted emotional and said, you can't go, who's going to help us with AP exam? And then I felt so guilt. I felt so guilty. Because, you know, 
it's true. I always, I always talk bad about people who left the middle of the year. I always say, what a loser. They left those kids with a permanent sub. Yeah, 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 I, and, I, and I, I could, no, they'll hire somebody qualified. Yeah. It, who's, who, who's coming, who's going to be looking for a teaching job in the middle of the year and they're already trained to teach calculus and have, and have success in calculus? They're all going to go sit in Mr. school. Yeah, you would have to, everybody would be bothering him every day after school. Yeah, and morning and lunch. I wouldn't let him eat. No, I, I decided to finish up the year, you know. Yeah. I kind of was regretting it after I did get COVID. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, why do I want to go back? Sure, what are you going to do? Like, what are your plans? Oh, let me pause. I don't want anybody to know my secrets. Sure. Really? You said bird watching too? No, actually. I was like, when I'm an old lady, I'm going to learn birds. Well, see, my dad, who died about three years ago, from Michigan, he moved in with he moved in with me like four times from Michigan. He kept coming back. He wouldn't leave. Well, he he, he died while he was with me, but be, but he came down. He had nothing to do, and I and I live in Harlingen. We have that birding festival every year. I don't know anything about it, but I said, "Hey, Dad, I know there's a lot of winter Texans go and do that birding festival. Why don't you just go sign up for the conference?" And he did, and he did like three different excursions where they went out and. He ended up buying a, like an eight hundred dollar camera. Then he traded it in and got a, a two thousand dollar camera. Is he, the Valley like really good for bird? Oh, it's excellent! It's excellent. the The biggest people who write the bird books come down to the Valley and are giving lessons and stuff. Well, that was it for the next following three, four years. He had a name for himself. His pictures were posted in his his dentist office and stuff like that. So. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I, I, I think I'm, I feel old, but I think I'm still young enough to work. I just got to find something to do. Maybe a bag checker at, at Walmart. Yay. That way I can see everybody. <laughs> say, Valentina, wait, I need to see your receipt. Yay. <laughs> yeah, we stop <laughs> Yeah, I'd stop you in a heartbeat. All right. Oh. Yeah, negative four, negative one, and two, negative one are your order pairs. Okay. Uh, I, I thought I'd start, start my own business too, you know, consulting. I just don't want to work every day. Part D. Part D says, is it possible for the curve to have a horizontal tangent at points where it intersects the, the x-axis? Huh, okay. Will it intersect... Horizontal tangents that intersect the x-axis. And it says, explain your reasoning. Well, we have our derivative over here. So horizontal tangent means the numerator has to be equal to zero, guys. The negative x plus 1, was that my derivative? I think it was, right? Has to be equal to zero. And what also is true, x plus 1 is 0. x has to be a negative 1. Now you're asking yourself, what do I do with this x equals to a negative 1? I would plug it into the equation if I haven't already done that. Have I already done that? Did I do it for this problem already? Or is that a different problem? Why does it ring a bell that I did it here? Oh, what is this right here? Was this from plugging in? Oh, no, that was plugging in y is a negative one. Never mind. All right, so here's the truth. x has to be a negative 1, and he said it has to cross the x-axis. So that means y would have to be what? Zero. Y is zero because if it's if it's a horizontal tangent and it has to cross the x-axis, would that mean it is the x-axis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I want to do is, Aaron, one more time, read me the original equation. 
x squared plus 2x plus y to the quartic <laughs> plus 4y equal to 5. Let's plug both of those in and see what happens. Negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 5. Because he's asking me, is it possible this to be true? And if this is true, I should get a true statement, right? 1 minus 2 has to be a 5. No, 1. Mi yeah, 1 minus 2. Uh-oh. Is negative 1 ever equal to 5? False statement. That means cannot happen. So you say that if x is a negative 1 and y is 0, negative 1, 0 is not on the function. Wow, there it is again. A lot of work. How many problems are left? One. Uh, I'm just going to talk about it, then I want to pass out your papers. This function looks like this is 1998. It is an ugly function to do the implicit differentiation. I think you really, this is your homework. Your homework is to finish these two pages. I really need you to work really hard that you can get that derivative. Okay? And B, and don't go looking it up, okay? Do it. You, you only look it up when you're stuck and it's not working, okay? Write the equation for each horizontal tangent to the curve. Remember, that would imply this would have to be equal to zero. You have an equation there, okay? You have an equation. You could probably solve that for... Y, and then uh, B, let's see. The line through the origin with a slope of a negative 1. Okay, let me ask you this question. It goes through 0, 0, has a slope of negative 1, looks like that. What's that equation? You should know that. The y-intercept is 0, the slope's a negative 1. That's right. So we're talking about that line right here. And we're telling you that it is tangent to the curve at point P. So wherever the function is, it's tangent. I'm just going to make this up. It's touching the function at, I'm making this up. It's not really there at, at a P, a point P. So that's point P right here. We know it's touching that. Find the, the x and y coordinates. Find what that has to be. So what does that mean I have to do? We already know that dy dx, which is your slope, is a negative 1. You already have the slope equation. It's written right here, even if you don't want to get it correct. Set that equal to a negative 1 gives you something to start out with, and then uh, that's going to be the hard, finish it up without cheating. I, I hope someone can come back and give me a discussion. All right, so I'm going to call it quits here, and you guys can do these two problems. C is going to be difficult. I got you started, but then you're going to have to probably uh, find out what that equation is when you set it equal to a, a negative 1. You may get lost, for real, for real. That's okay. Probably very few people got C correct in, in 1998. I could actually tell you what percentage of the people got this problem, how many points they got on this problem. All right, I'm going to pass out your papers now. Two.